Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'll show you how to leverage the Gemini API to transcribe audio files into text. This general method can also be applied to other scenarios requiring large language models for processing large batches of data similarly. Let's dive in. The best place to start this process is by visiting Google's AI Studio website at aistudio.google.com. This platform is free and offers access to Google's powerful large language models. By default, I'm utilizing Google Gemini 2.0 Flash here. While the Cutting Edge 2.5 Pro model is considerably more potent, it comes with stricter rate limits. Consequently, I favor Gemini 2.0 Flash because it performs well, is cost-effective, and offers a very generous rate limit. Now, to transcribe an audio file within AI Studio, we first upload the desired file. In this example, it's a WAV audio file. Next, we provide a straightforward prompt like, please transcribe the audio file to text. Then, we execute the request. As you can observe, the process is quite fast, completing in 2.2 seconds, and the resulting transcription is indeed accurate. Okay, that demonstrates processing a single file manually through the web interface. But what if you have numerous audio files? Uploading each one individually via the interface becomes inefficient. This is precisely why we utilize the API. It allows for processing files programmatically in batches. The transition is quite simple. We just need to use the Get Code button provided in the interface. Upon clicking this button, AI Studio displays the Python code equivalent of the task just performed in the web interface. We can then copy this generated script directly into our own Python files, or, as I am doing here, into a Jupyter notebook. This allows us to run the process on our data stored locally. For this demonstration, I am utilizing a Kaggle notebook which functions as a web-based Jupyter environment for writing and running Python code. As you can observe, I have already uploaded my collection of audio files into this notebook environment. Now, let's proceed to transcribe them with the API by pasting the code we previously copied from AI Studio. Now, we must make a few modifications to the pasted code. The first adjustment, while optional, enhances readability, renaming the function, perhaps to transcribe audio. Secondly, and crucially, we need an API key. If you are using this for the first time, you'll have to obtain one. Fortunately, it's free and simple, just locate the Get API Key button, choose Create API Key, and then copy the key provided. In my case, I have previously generated an API key and already have it copied. Returning to the Kaggle environment, it's important to follow best practices for security. Avoid placing your API key directly within the code as this risks exposing your secret. Instead, utilize tools designed for managing secrets securely. Kaggle conveniently offers an add-on called Secrets for this exact purpose. Using Kaggle Secrets, you add your key, which is then displayed masked, enhancing safety. My key is already stored there. Kaggle also conveniently provides the necessary code to access this secret securely within the notebook. We copy this access code and paste it into our script. As shown, the key is loaded into a variable, and we subsequently use this variable to replace the API key placeholder in our main function. First, execute the cell retrieving the API key. Then, another necessary change involves the file reference. The original code used the file uploaded via the website. We need it to point to a local file path instead. The best way is making the file path an input argument to our function. Let's make that modification now. 
All right, we are confirmed to be using the Gemini 2.0 flash model, which is suitable. Now, looking at the code, the contents variable holds the complete chat history from our AI Studio interaction. Examining it reveals three parts. First, my original prompt, transcribe audio to text. Second, the language model's response based on the sample audio. And third, a placeholder entry. We need to eliminate the second and third entries entirely, as this function will now process new audio files passed to it, making the previous history irrelevant. Additionally, the function currently only prints the LLM's output as it streams, it doesn't return the final text. We need to change this behavior. To achieve this with stream generation, we must collect all the partial results, concatenate them into a single string, and then have the function return this complete transcription. We will remove the printing logic and focus on returning the assembled string. That covers all the necessary modifications. To summarize the steps, we copied the base function from AI Studio, configured secure API key usage, cleaned the included chat history, and updated the function to return the transcribed text. We can now test our updated function. Let's try transcribing one of the audio files available here on Kaggle, perhaps this particular one. Running the code, we see that it executes successfully and provides the transcription. The next logical step involves using a simple for loop to iterate through all the uploaded audio files, calling our transcription function for each one via the Gemini API. Let's set this up. With 32 files present in our set and estimating an average processing time of about two seconds per file, we might expect the entire batch of roughly 30 files to complete within approximately one minute. However, there's an important factor to consider. The Gemini API has a per minute rate limit. The flash model specifically allows 15 requests each minute. If this limit is surpassed, the API call will fail, returning an error message like resource exhausted due to exceeding the allocated quota, particularly common on the free tier. It's important to understand that you can send many requests. The constraint is on the rate per minute. You simply need to control the request frequency. This necessitates using a rate limiter, which I have implemented here as shown. The approach is direct. It monitors the time intervals between your API calls. This limiter works by introducing pauses, it makes the execution thread sleep for a calculated duration. This ensures that across any rolling one minute period, no more than the allowed 15 requests are dispatched. For convenient usage, this rate limiter is implemented as a Python function decorator. We can therefore easily apply it to our transcription function. Here is the transcription function adapted from AI Studio. We now apply the rate limiter by adding the at rate limiter decorator just before its definition. When we run the batch process again, this limiter will actively count the outgoing requests. As the count nears the per minute limit, it automatically pauses the thread briefly, ensuring the threshold isn't breached and preventing the API error from being triggered. Execution then resumes automatically. You might see status messages like rate limiting, waiting for 41 seconds. Processing continues normally after this pause. The key benefit is that your program runs through all files without breaking due to exceeding the API rate limits during execution.
The script therefore continues executing until every job is successfully finished. The primary drawback is the added latency from the pauses, meaning the total processing takes longer. Nevertheless, this approach avoids needing complex program logic changes or having to restart failed runs. Consequently, I find this method preferable. It's a practical technique for managing rate limits. That concludes what I wanted to share today. Certainly, I will publish this notebook and provide the link for it in the video description. Thanks for tuning in and see you in the next video.